We started a company called Mobile DX. It's the first company actually to, to have uh, released what I call the Snap and Send eye exam. It's called iSnappy. And the app is really designed to give people um, who are in remote locations or can't make it into the office or in a situation where they're just out of touch with their doctor to at least give the doctor a, a view and some imaging. They could also look at what the uh, vision is and they can also do a visual field to give the doctor a little heads up as to what, how, how urgent, how necessary is it that they go to an emergency room and, and take care of that or is this something that can wait and I really do think that this is a technology that's going to be uh, more and more important especially with dermatology we're uh, just on the verge of releasing a dermatology app similarly and we're going to be releasing apps across the board in every area of medicine. So what's the limit where do you draw the line in terms of an app that you can create where you can do an exam at home I mean you have you know of course people are going to be taking pictures of their strep throat. I don't all, even know if that's even possible. I mean, it's all possible. Yeah. I mean, imaging technology is growing at, at such a fast rate. I mean, and now we're talking about 3D technology. There's there's no doubt there will be a 3D camera in the future, and there will be 3D screens. And so, really, your entire exam um, potentially could be done in a 3D setting where the doctor would have almost every single aspect of the exam that they'd need to see. Of course, there are going to be issues about color. How does color translate into a camera? How does the touch and the topography, the surface of something? And so there's a lot of doctors who are fearful that this is a technology that's going to create a lot of problems because they feel you're going to miss things and so forth. And so I am sort of in a hybrid sense, hybrid uh, uh, camp, meaning I think that there's a lot that be can be done with, a, with an iPhone or an iPad touch or some sort of thing. And I also think that having a conversation, especially if it's over the phone with a conversation, you, know, you can learn a lot from just the conversation and also maybe a video with the patient to understand how to really correctly make a diagnosis. Are a lot of doctors on board? A lot of doctors aren't. They're very concerned that this is a problem uh, because they don't know that they can get the right information. It's you know, without sounding, you know, part of the young club, I mean, basically the younger doctors who are coming up, who are born on this technology, who've been using iPhone apps, their, you know, iPhones and new tech and, and video games their whole life, they're very comfortable with that. And some of the older, older doctors who aren't as nimble, let's say, with computers are having problems without being, you know, I mean, that's just the reality of new technology. Are you afraid that you're too much ahead of the curve? I know there are a lot of companies and they come out and they, for example, I was doing online videos back in 1999. I was one of the first right. web centric video reporters and that company ended up switching gears to video conferencing because there was too much buffering at the time. They couldn't wait another 10 years for it to truly catch on and wait for the technology to catch up. So the beauty is that I've, I've been doing it in my practice and other doctors have been doing this for years. One of the first examples was when I was a resident and we took pictures of the eye and sent it to our attendings with a palm trio. So that was a long time ago. It's an old technology. The palm doesn't really, the trio doesn't exist. And uh, it was a clunky way of transmitting information. So this has been doing, done all the time. And now what we're going to do is a more formal Formal way of doing it. One of the most important things that we're doing and we involve is making sure that the HIPAA standards are, are um, secure, that the, trans that the transmissions and everything will be done uh, with the highest level of security without having a problem in terms of uh, interceptors or that being sort of fortunately I have a secure EMR system and so when I transmit the data it goes into my secure EMR and so there's no trace of it except in the clouds which is secure. But this is also going to be an issue that's going to, that will be coming up. So it's just ultimately I would think it would come from the demand from the patients. It's going to be from, you know, the bottom up, you know, I patients agree. demanding it and saying, hey, you know what? I'm on a cruise right now. I have this issue. I can take a picture of it. I'm going to email it to Absolutely. give me your email. Exactly. And it's already happening. I mean, there's a, the patients are already demanding, uh, and, and rightfully so, to be able to communicate with their doctor with email communication, and that's starting to happen. Mm -hmm. And the next step, step is going to be something like iSnappy or whatever net manifestation that comes out. And the patients will push this because um, it's always great to see the doctor, but sometimes you can't make it to see the doctor. There's so many examples. Let's say you're stuck up in the mountains and there's a snowstorm and you it's better to do that than to do nothing at all.